Hey guys, I'm Elliot, this is Everything Elliot, and up above my head is my grapple. Now this is a Titan Attachments, I think five foot, so what is that, 60 inch? 60 inch grapple, it's a root, great, root rake grapple. I've owned it for about two years now, and as I'm sitting down here working on stuff, I look up at it, and it might be able to tell on camera, but something on that arm looks askew. Right up here. Now, I don't know if you can tell on camera, but from where I'm standing, it looks like it's bent. So it is springtime. I'm going to be using that soon. I want to pull it down. We'll take a look at it. And I'm going to give you my pros, cons, and what I might be thinking to do with this thing in the future. I attach it to my Kubota L4701, which if you look on the side of the loader, is an LA765. That means this loader can lift 765 kilograms, I think. So that's like 1,500 pounds, maybe, quick conversion. I'll do the math, I'll put it down below. That behemoth weighs like 700 pounds. It's heavy, but don't get excited. So that right there takes up almost half of my loading capacity or my lifting capacity. So let's get it down, let's take a look at it, and we'll discuss the pros, cons, and the problems I've had with it. Well, now that it's on the ground, let's take a closer look at it. Now, like I was saying, this is a Titans Attachments 60 inch root rake grapple. As you can see right there, I wonder why they don't have the weight in there. Hmm, weird. But anywho, this was purchased from palletforks.com. They're the ones that do Titan Attachments and uh, I've had it for about two years, and I'm gonna tell you the things that I like and don't like on it, and the problems. But now that I have this thing on the ground, it actually doesn't look bent. It looks like this gap is actually smaller than this gap. Let's grab the tape measure real quick and just uh, give that a measurement. So down here on the inside, we have just a little bit better than two and a half inches, inside to inside. And up top, we have almost, oh, almost have two and three quarter. Well, we'll call it two and five eighths. So that's probably what I'm seeing with the bent look there. Let's see if the other side's the same. The other side looks a little bit better. I can't believe I haven't noticed this before. So at the bottom, we've got about two and five eighths. At the top, again, two and five eighths. So this side is a little more straight than that side. Now that might cause premature pin wear on your pin here because, well, it's going at an angle, you know? I guess if you're gonna pay the money, you'd want it to be straight. But like I said, I've had this thing for two years. I have put it through some serious work. So what I'll do quick is I'm just gonna hook it up to the tractor and I'll show you how I hook it up, how I have the hydraulic lines on my tractor. Now I don't have a third function on my tractor. I've got the hydraulic lines run a little differently and I'll show you guys how to do that because it saves you some money if you do it the way I do it. Now I had the idea of putting the third function on my tractor, but it just wasn't cost effective for me. And I'll tell you why in just a couple moments.
Did you see me stand up while... Whoa. How you doing? Uh, did you see me stand up while I was putting the grapple on? I mean, it's something you have to regularly do to see over the top of your tractor to hook up attachments. And uh, I only can do that because I disabled my seat safety switch. And if that's something you're interested in doing because you hate safety like me, I'll put a link up top to that video. Now I'm gonna grab the grease gun and grease this thing up because it hasn't been greased all winter. If you do any amount of greasing, you need to get yourself a lock and lube. I mean, they are lifesavers. Just clean my fitting off, take the lock and lube, lock it on there, it stays on there, and then you just pump grease in. Lot of cat hair on this. Because the cats love to live on the top of the pallet racking. So now that we've got it greased, let's get it hooked up so we can open and close it. So this, when you buy this, it actually comes with flat face couplers on it. And I had to take them off to put Pioneer couplers on it because I have Pioneer couplers on my tractor. So I guess that's a cost savings thing. You could take the flat face couplers off of it, sell them for like a hundred bucks, buy your Pioneer fittings and profit. So what I like to do the first time, I haven't hooked anything up to this in a while, just push this ball in. It'll let a little hydraulic fluid out. That'll clean anything out. Same thing with this. Well, not same thing, but shove your little rag in there. Make sure everything is nice and clean before attaching these. So naturally you're gonna to wanna to do the bottom one first. Get that hooked up. And the top one hooked up. Boom, they're in. I like to take this hose and just wrap it down behind all the loader arm stuff. That way it stays out of the way. So now, in theory, this should open and close. But before we get to that, I wanna show you how I have my third function set up. So if you guys wanna do it this way, you can. So you can see here, I don't have the third function buttons on here. Bo, you coming to visit? Come here, buddy. But I do have rear remotes and I did purchase these rear remotes and have them put on here because I do run rear implements that require rear remotes. And I didn't wanna buy rear remotes and the third function. So what I did, rear remotes, had some hoses made up, hoses come up here, a little extra slack, and then go down. And I've run them through that little hole right there. They run under the tractor down here. And then they're right here. If you can see them, there's one and the other's right next to it. Here's the other one right there. There's the two lines. They run up the loader arm right here to right here where I have a quick disconnect. And I put a quick disconnect here. That way, when I take my loader off, I don't have to take the entire line up. Basically, this half of the line stays on the loader and the back half stays on the tractor. So once you run that line up here, you can buy the mounting kit from Kubota and just mount the lines like you would normally a third function. So let's fire up the tractor and use the rear remotes to open the grapple. So obviously everything works as it should. Now let's go over what I don't like about this grapple. This grapple is extremely heavy. I don't remember exactly, but I wanna say it's like 700 pounds or something a little more. And it takes up a lot of the loading capabilities of my tractor. I can pick up less because this weighs so much. If you have a larger tractor, this might be better for you. But since I have a 47 horsepower Kubota, this takes up like half of the lifting capacity and that's not great. Now that comes with a benefit though, because it's so heavy, you know, it's made out of thick steel. Obviously you can see here, this is like, I don't know, three eighths maybe. Let's go get a tape. So it's actually made out of half inch. If it'll focus half inch steel, everything is made out of half inch. I mean, that's fantastic, but it comes at a price, the weight. Now this is probably more generally made for a skid steer with higher lifting capacities, but 
you're going you're gonna to sacrifice some of the strength of this with using thinner materials, making it lighter. Now, one major problem I've had, you might be able to see right here, I'm missing a bar. Apparently, I broke the weld off, which doesn't seem to be a great weld to begin with. And that bar is gone. And that came flying off when I was tearing down my garage. I don't remember in the video if you can see it flying off or not. but I'll put a link up top for you guys to check that video out. Another thing I don't like about this, you can see here it's got one, two, three pins. Well, these two are the only ones that are greasable. That bottom pin is not greasable. Now, mind you, that doesn't do a lot of rotation, so it's probably not necessary to be greasable, but it would be nice to be greasable because, you know, keeping things lubed up and whatnot. So let's talk about the pros of this grapple. One of the major pros of it is how strong it is. I like to use this grapple to actually turn the top head down like this, the lid, and back drag with it. And because it's so heavy duty, you can do that. That being said, it does not have physical stops on it. When you're doing that and you're back dragging with it, you're putting all that pressure on these pistons. There are other brands out there that have physical stops that is more safe to do that with, so you're not putting all that pressure on these pistons. I also used to have another grapple that came out and it was flat on the bottom, and then had a top that come down over like a bucket type thing. And I didn't like that because I was picking up one or two logs and that log wouldn't be clamped down all the way and it would slide out the side or something crazy like that would happen. With this nice clamshell, when it comes together, it comes all the way together and you can clamp pretty much any log or stick in there. Michelle, what do you like about this grapple? You don't know? Michelle has no opinion on the grapple. Two years. We've had it two years. It lasts a while. I hope it lasts a while. I mean, it was like $2,700. That's another thing. I mean, the price on this thing. It was expensive. It is a Chinese made grapple but it was still very expensive. And that's because I am imagine because of the steel they're using. Now I actually am thinking about getting a new grapple. Of course you are. Oh, there's, I was wondering if she was gonna respond to that. And that's because this thing is so heavy. I can only pick up like one log with it because I'm using all my lifting capacity on the weight of the grapple. If I got something that was like, let's say 300 pounds versus this seven, 800 pounds I'd be able to pick more up. I'd sacrifice some of the rigidity of this heavy steel, but that being said, I'll understand that it's a little lighter duty of a grapple and I won't be as hard on it. I have put this thing through hell and it has made it out alive. The only thing I've broken is that one piece of plate steel. And you know, if that's all that's went wrong with it, I guess it's not that bad. I just, my major complaint is how heavy it is. If you have a smaller tractor, like a 47 or one or blower or blower, blower? Below. or below, I would not recommend Titan attachments. All of their grapples are super heavy. Well, that's about all I have to say about this grapple. If you've been considering purchasing a Titan's attachments, think about the weight before you purchase it. I mean, I wish I would have thought ahead. I just said to myself, hey, it's, you know, X amount of pounds and my tractor can lift X amount of pounds. That's plenty. Well, guess what? That weight goes quickly once you start picking up logs and stuff. Now, if you're only using brush and what have you, I'm sure it would do fine. I use this thing for brush all the time, but when I do use it for logs, it gives me some trouble. So let me give you a little bonus here. I see a lot of guys have trouble with their hydraulic connections, taking them on, taking them off, stuff like that. Not so much taking them off, but putting them back on once you take them off. The best thing to do for this is you wanna relieve all of the hydraulic pressure so what I do, since I have it on a third function, or on a, uh, on a rear remote, you take it, just lock that rear remote, and you can watch it slowly closing. So what this is doing is this is naturally letting gravity force the hydraulic fluid from the grapple back into the tractor. 
Now that gravity has done all the work and the grapple is down where it needs to be, you can safely take these off and there's gonna be no pressure in this line. If there's no pressure in this line on the grapple side, these will hook right back up. If there's any pressure in this line, these are not gonna hook up easily for you. Well, that's gonna be it for today's video. Hope you'd enjoy it. If you have any questions about the Titan attachments, grapple, what I like, what I don't like, if I've missed anything, make sure you leave a comment below. And like I said, I might be looking at a new grapple in the near future just because this thing is so heavy. That is something you should definitely consider before purchasing one. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope this helped you out. If you have any questions, leave a comment. If you don't like what I did, leave a comment. If you have a suggestion on a grapple I should buy, leave a comment. Until the next one, have a great day.